Welcome to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast, where we learn about some success stories and some not so successful stories. But either way, we learn. Each episode, we talk with successful real estate agents and vendors about things they have done to make them successful and some things they did that you might want to avoid. Join us for each episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. All right, listeners. Well, special treat for you today. Uh, and I, it's fun for me because this is a buddy of mine, uh, Mr. Theo Fascinoli. How you doing, Theo? Good. Thanks for having me, Preston. Oh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. I, I, there's some I'm always like, oh, goodness. Uh, and this one, I'm like, oh, man, this is my buddy. But uh, <laughs> even though he is my buddy, did I pronounce the last name correct? I know that you did. You, yeah, yeah. You probably yeah. get that. You heard it enough, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of people I interview, and it's like, before we go live here, make sure right. I'm pronouncing this correctly because it's embarrassing. But uh, for all the listeners out there, uh, Theo. He is also a real estate agent. Um, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit, but Theo's uh, primary business is uh, closing gifts, if I'm not correct. I mean, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we will get into that and, and the importance of closing gifts and you know how that can lead to more business and that sort of stuff. Um, and, and Theo can definitely help you out with that. But before we get too far into that, give us a little background, Theo. Uh, you know, who you are, you know, how you got to where you are and, uh, and, uh, you know, how are you putting your dent in the universe? <laughs> okay, cool. That can always go down a rabbit trail, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, um, I always like to start with my family. So, um, my wife and I, we've been married for uh, six and a half years. We were, um, college, uh, not sweethearts because we were actually friends in college. Uh, but got me. You were in the friend zone. We were in the friend. I was in the friend zone. Yes. <laughs> it took you four <laughs> years to get out of the friend zone. <laughs> yeah. It actually, took me eight. Four years after oh, okay. college. <laughs> but eventually. Don't you love that? They're always telling you about these guys they're dating, exactly. and you're like, Yeah. <laughs> right here, right here. <laughs> so patience for those that aren't yeah. married out there. But um, we have four kids. Um, two here, two in heaven. Um, our oldest is Tessa, um, who is, will be five soon. And then our youngest is Seth, who just turned one yesterday. Oh, awesome. You know, and I, and I don't want to bring up any hurt or anything, but I, I also know you do some work, some charity work, uh, having to do with the, you know, kind of connected to the two that are in heaven. And if you want to, I mean, you know, I, don't, I didn't, I, I didn't ask you about this earlier, but you want to, uh, put it out there in the universe, like w what you do and you yeah, know, if anybody else yeah. is interested in helping with that. Yeah. So our two middle, um, Hannah and James, um, Hannah was, um, still born at 29 weeks in 2019. And then James was uh, miscarried at eight weeks in 2020. Um, so uh, sorry, from both of, yeah, thank you. Um, from both those losses, me and my wife have, um, created a, nonprofit called Out of the Ashes. Um, mm -hmm. It's primarily a 5K um, in October. October is the Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. So this That's year- coming up. It's coming up yeah, too. It's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> this year it's October um, 22nd. Um, it's a candlelight 5K. There's also a walk in case you're not runners. <laughs> um, but the whole concept is to um, just have a place, a night to honor um the baby's lost and the families that have kind of walked that journey um and then the nonprofit raises money for the financial burden that miscarriages and stillbirths can have that's kind of a slap in the face to get that bill and mm -hmm. so we're just trying to relieve you know just a little aspect of that that grief that other families will experience uh two questions um yeah. I, and i participated in it one year um and i, I will again if my I've got to look at the schedule and everything. Um, is it still um, kind of off Monroe near East Mecklenburg High School? Yeah. And if someone was interested in either walking, running, or sponsoring, is there a website that could, uh, um, or is how could they find out more about it? Yeah, um, out of the ashes 5k.com is the website. Um, we also have an Instagram out of the ashes 5k too, where um, you can find the link to register from there. Okay. Uh, is everything yeah. spelled out except the five? Probably is the five. Yeah, the yeah everything's spelled out except for the five. 
Um, yeah, and it's in East Charlotte. Um, East City Church is who hosts it for us in their parking lot is where the race starts and it runs through or walks through a neighborhood as well. Cool. And for anybody familiar with Charlotte, it's pretty close to East Mech, if I remember, not just a yeah. little bit down. Right from behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good deal. Good deal. It's, it's a good thing. So, uh, you know, anybody who's interested in that, it's a really good cause. Well, switching gears here a little bit. Tell us, uh, Theo, uh, and, and I also know Theo ran track. Uh, I had several conversations with him about that because my daughter was running track as well and like how to get her time up and everything. Yeah. Of course, now they're both in college. They're not running track now. I mean, it, Man, it takes a lot to run on that level, but you did. Um, but so how did you get from uh, college, college sweetheart into uh, closing gifts in the real estate world? Tell, tell us yeah. how that happened. So I started, many of you might know Cutco, which is the main product of Carolina Closing Gifts. Um, so I started how, if you're familiar with Cutco, a lot of college kids start um, with friends and family, kind of like Girl Scout cookies is how I explain it. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I did the Cutco thing while I was in college. Um, it's a great experience too for any parents out there with teenagers. Um, I even ran my own um, office for a summer while I was in college through Cutco and the support that Cutco gives. So that's how I kind of got started with it. And then Cutco has a program. So the year I graduated college, um, that plugs you into closing gifts and kind of trains you on um, how to sell closing gifts. So for a while, I was actually just doing um, Cutco closing gifts. And then over time, that developed into my own business Carolina Closing Gifts, which Cutco is still part of that, but we have other products as well that we, and services and programs that we do for um, gifting and appreciation in the real estate world. Okay, two, two questions I uh, follow up on yeah. that. Um, typically, I guess, is it right after closing that these are given? And then the second part of that question is, uh, besides Cutco, which is a fantastic product, yeah. and they have a fantastic sales program and everything too. I, so many entrepreneurs came yeah. from that Cutco, Hal El, Elrod, El Miracle Morning. I know all those, all former Cutco folks, but uh, what other products do you also have? Yeah. So um, other, all of our products are kitchen-based um, simply because the kitchen's the heart of the home. That's mm -hmm. where um, we, we want to put something in the hands of your clients that they'll use and see on a daily weekly basis and so if it's in the kitchen everybody has to eat even if they're not a good cook <laughs> um, they still have to prepare their food or warm it up in the microwave so they're still walking they still gotta cut it they still gotta yeah, slice they still it gotta cut it so in addition to cutco we do cutting boards um we actually have a new vendor um, local to Charlotte that we're starting to use it's a really beautiful board we do um, any drinkware you can think of so like you know tumblers like this um, wine tumblers, the skinny ice coffee tumblers. Um, we also do some bottle openers, wine and beer openers. Um, and then around the holidays, we do gift baskets where we'll combine several products and add like local coffee or vineyard wine. But we only do that really for the holiday gift baskets. Um, and then we also do some marketing um, flyers and card services for people as well. Cause my wife's actually a, a graphic designer and part of our team now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and you, you about answered my question that I was about to follow up with, but I'll, I'll still do it anyway. Yeah. So what, what advantages, uh, I mean, you know, as a realtor, um, you know, I, I'm a, pretend like I'm a realtor here. I, it, I, I got a lot on my plate, you know, I got, yeah, yeah. I have lead generate and I'm done and I'm, putting out signs and I'm doing all this stuff and I definitely want to have closing gifts and I won't follow up. <clears throat> what, what it, what can, what does Carolina closing gifts do that can help me out with that and simplify, you know, make my life a little bit easier yeah. and, and get me more business, I guess. Yeah. So how, how does well, that process? Yeah. And you, you kind of answered it too, right? Realtors, you guys are so busy and that's where, you know, people like Preston and Joy and Larry Laughter, that's where they all come in to make your job easier, right? Once you connect it with you as a home inspector, you know that your buyer clients are going to get a great home inspection. Your seller clients even have a resource as they prepare to list for you. Um, and, and I kind of work that same way, right? I want to be a part of your team, of your package, if you will, when you're selling 
it to your clients. Um, you know, that you might not be telling them that they're going to get a gift, but you know that it's a part of your program. I'm a vendor that kind of takes that task off your list because a lot of times realtors intend to do um, closing gifts specifically or even the follow up, right? Like, oh, I want to send a thank you note to every client and then you don't get around to it. It's like two years later, you're, you're sending a belated thank you card or I've, I've always wanted to do birthday gifts or birthday cards. So any of those type of appreciations, we can, we can just take off your plate and you're not having to think about it but you, you also know that your clients are getting um, appreciated and loved on, which is a huge part of them returning to you and also referring you more business. 100%. And, you know, I mean, you've been around the real estate world as, as a vendor, although I hate that word vendor. Right, you do. <laughs> I like to say the partner. Same, partner. Same with me. I'm not actually selling or buying real estate, but I'm highly connected to that world as, as well as you are. Um, you know, and we go to a lot of the same things and we hear the coaching and all that. And, and, and one of the biggest things I always hear is that, uh, you know, a lot of people buy a house on average, what, every five to eight years. And so many people five years later can barely remember who even the realtor was yeah. or, you know, they, I mean, that is the biggest mistake, I think, that the realtor doesn't stay in touch with them. And, you know, some realtors are upset, you know, that, you know, three, four or five years later, they use another realtor. But then the follow up question with that is, have you stayed in touch with them? Have you, yeah. you know, and, and if, if the answer to that is no, I mean, that's on you, really. I mean, yeah. would you agree with that? Or, you know, what, what suggestions do you have or how can you add to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, the statistic I always use out there is Forbes talks about how it's five times more expensive to acquire a new client than it is to retain a current client. So m most realtors spend a lot of time to get that, that client, to get them their home, to list their home. And so if you just spent an extra 5% on your current database, right, um, that would actually increase your revenue by 75% each year wow. because they're sitting there, they're ready to use you again, because most likely if you're a realtor who's doing the job right, they had a, a decent experience with you. And now we just have to make sure that you don't forget about them. So they don't feel forgotten, left out. They don't meet the next realtor in their yoga class, right? So when they meet that realtor, they can Our say, home inspector. Hey, I work with, you know, uh, so-and-so um, already. And they just connect that realtor that they randomly meet in the yoga class to you, as opposed to now that becomes their realtor. hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, even, uh, I think, what is it, that Keller Williams book, um, uh, uh, what is it, Millionaire Real Estate Agent? I mean, he recommends, and I know not everybody listening is a Keller Williams agent. That's Mayor okay. Greer. I mean, uh, but there's some good stuff, I think, from that. And even I, I it was like 30, I think you should try like 33 touches mm -hmm. a year. So, you know, in some form or fashion, they need to have a touch, whether that's a, you know, a Facebook, you know, happy birthday you know, congratulations, your kid, or, you know, a, a cutting board would be like fantastic yeah. Or, yeah. or something. Um, but you need to stay top of mind. Um, how could Carolina closing gifts? I mean, you guys could help with that. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. You know, so the main thing that most realtors come to us is the closing gift. Um, you can get a batch of gifts to have on hand. So you have something to give at the closings. We also have an option where, you know, if you're either not attending the closings or want it sent kind of after the whole hustle and bustle of buying and selling, we can hold on to your stock of gifts and send it to your clients. And then the third option of things that we do is um, we have several different follow-up programs that are customizable. So it can be as simple as, hey, I'd love to, you know, in addition to the closing gift, love to send all my clients a birthday card or birthday gift. Or it can be as complicated, not complicated, but as intense as, you know, I, I would like to have several touches throughout the year. So you kind of have a program, almost like a CRM type sort of thing yeah. with actual. Oh, that's yeah. pretty awesome, man. I might yeah. need to get up with you about that with <laughs> some realtors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, I'm Bill Gallagher with Superior School of Real Estate. And I'm here with Preston Sandlin, 
of Home Inspection Carolina. Preston, I've always liked your style, especially those pants. And also, I've been interested in the home inspection business for a long time. Well, Bill, that's ironic. I've always admired your style, and I've always admired your ability to educate these fine folks for sometimes four, eight hours a day. I wish that I could do what you do. Hey, Preston, wouldn't it be cool if we switched? Preston, we sure got what we wished for, buddy. We sure did. And now that you're the expert, Bill, I mean, you are wearing the pants. And I'm the instructor and the educator. Tell us what Home Inspection Carolina is doing these days to make the home buying process easier for realtors and home buyers. Well, Preston, all our home inspection reports now are online for the real estate agent and the client to review the report online mm -hmm. and to be able to create a repair list basically online by either clicking repair, accept, monetary compensation, and once they prepare the request, they can then press email, text, or print right then. You mean it's all automated, Bill? Absolutely. We are high tech. Wow. What else is Home Inspection Carolina doing different these days? Well, Preston, we're training our home inspectors to be non-alarmist. We are training them to put things into perspective and to simplify the message for the hopeful homeowner. Non-alarmist is key, Bill. You remember those days of the 100-page reports and those three-ring binders that would just go on and on and on, la, 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 la. Thank you for being a good non-alarmist. And Preston, one more thing. We fix the small stuff for free. Do you remember when home inspectors always put those little nitpicky items on those reports? Oh, bless their hearts. Well, at Home Inspection Carolina, if we can fix it in five minutes or less, we do it for free. We're better with a caulk gun than a keyboard any day. We just fix it. You, you mean there's no cost for this, Bill? Preston, it's free. Wow. Well, Preston, these pants really are a catch. Well, Bill, I've enjoyed wearing the suit, but I don't think I could wear it every day because I got to fix the small stuff for free, and I don't want to ruin a good suit. Preston, it's been a lot of fun flipping the switch. <laughs> Let yeah, me like ask you. With the uh, 33 touches, you know, most of them are going to be your, your emails, your texts, but you want to make sure, I think Gary Keller even says this, that you want to make sure that um, I think three to five of them are Personal, Highly personal and yeah. um, I, I call it intense it's not the right word but but something that's a gift that's going to speak to their heart more than just a recognition right right yep. yeah ideally a, a real estate agent wants to turn one deal into six right yep that you do a great job with them they're happy with you you have a closing gift you have follow-up you know where that yours top of mind and then you know as soon as their friends and family need a realtor hey I love Sally she was great you know but where Sally goes wrong is no, well, that's my next question. Where do you think um, when people mess up the closing gifts idea or, you know, where they, you know, try to do it on their own or don't use you, um, yeah. <laughs> how do they mess it up? I mean, what, when, when they mess it up or don't do it or whatever, what, what, what do you think is the most common mess up or misconception or whatever with closing gifts? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I would say two, one, um, there is a philosophy out there that my service is good enough. And so whether it's, hey, I don't, I don't um, give a gift to my sellers, right? Like, hey, their gift is selling um, the home. And it's like, well, if you want more sellers, the more you appreciate the sellers or the buyers or that specific client, the more likely you're going to get more of those clients. So you don't want to, you know, not appreciate your listings at all or not appreciate your buyers at all. Um, so I think that one's a common one where people mistake. And then um, the other one is personalizing it. So um, I think when you're newer and you're starting out and you only have a couple transactions, people will often tell me, oh, you know, I really love gift giving, which is great. And they're coming from a great place. Um, but they want to spend the time to kind of get an individualized gift. Like, oh, well, this person's a, a football person. So I want to get them football tickets. This person's a coffee lover. I want to get them coffee. And so they're kind of spinning their wheels to try and find that perfect gift. Well, right. as their business grows, you really have to systemize that. 
um, as opposed to scale, taking, yeah, scale it. Yeah, scale it's it, just hard. Right? Yeah. And so doing that from the start helps you to already open up that time so you can grow your business and focus on what's important. While it's important to appreciate, let somebody else, whether it's me or another system, gifting company, you know, let them take care of it because they're going to do it well. <laughs> yeah. Well, and speaking yeah. of scaling and systematizing, I mean, it's not just you anymore, right? You you have a, a, a helper or, or don't you have an yeah. assistant as well to help you? Yeah, we have a team. So we have um, five staff members. Oh, wow. wow. Um, you know, that help um, in all different areas of the follow up and the card writing and the graphic design. I said my wife's the designer. and We also have another person on the team who does some design work. Um, and then we have a sales team. Um, there is four others throughout the Carolinas. So oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I got to ask you another question. Sorry, the guy that's here fixing oh, you're fine. He, was, he was, he gave me a moon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Our air conditioner's been broke for like two days, man. Woo. It's not broke through the entire house, but it is in the bedroom. Yeah. In the, in the office. I'm like, Ollie, if you Love see it. me sweating, you're like, Ollie, he's pressing under pressure. <laughs> but I'm glad to see him. We've had like three or four fans on us and stuff. So, uh, Hopefully it's nothing too expensive. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're good. Anyway, might need to give him a closing gift. But uh, <laughs> so I, I got a question. Um, now you're heavily tied with the real estate community. You have your real estate license, as do I. But it's not my primary thing. But you, you certainly have a a, a front row seat to the real estate. So you've seen a lot of agents, you know, come go some be successful and some not so much. <laughs> what what do you think from, you know, from 10,000 feet or from the outside looking in, what is that special sauce or, or what is it that the, the ones that have longevity and that are successful? Cause it, it, I mean, it's a tough business. I mean, we all yeah. know it's a tough business and, you know, and I know like I do a lot of those uh, new agent orientations and I've just kind of figured, you know, when I look out on the room and all these new agents, I'm sitting there going, They'll, they'll probably be about four or five that are going to be really successful. And I'm trying to pick yeah. out who they are, you know, but, you know, probably over half, you know, everybody sells a house to their parents. Yeah. <laughs> <and> their <cousin. laughs> and then it's hard to get that, you know, outside the family. What do you think that special sauce is or that ingredient that, that, uh, that really makes somebody successful and have longevity in this business? Yeah, um, interesting thought that I had was, you know, as, mi as much as I've been in the business, and you could probably relate to this too, I've probably only had a handful of um, realtors that have asked me if I know anybody that buys or sells, right? And I can always tell that those those specific realtors are definitely going to, you know, go far because they're not um, afraid to ask anyone, right? Um but I, I would say systems, right? Like I see that a lot in just even when I pitch, whether they use me or not, like um, the ones that have the systems already in place or are willing to do some of those systems, um, it's clear that they understand the longevity of the business. Um, and then I think it's, yeah, it's just the grit, right? Like I think, especially in the last two years, um, you can tell the realtors that are complaining about the, the, you know, happenings in the world and those that are just doing their business and trekking on and being creative and doing what it takes to kind of continue to trek on in spite of what's kind of happening. Those are the ones that are typically going to be successful versus the ones kind of when I talk to them that are complaining about it. Yeah. I yeah. know I've made that mistake of, starting to watch the news too much or something yeah. it and then i find myself complaining or you know you know and i think i heard a quote one time it's like you know we can't do anything about the macro but we certainly can do things about our personal you know i can't do anything about the, the main economy or the big economy but i can do things about my personal economy and yeah. that you know that's all we can do so and let's focus on that yeah it's it's a waste of energy to worry about the other well, awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's, let's make it a little fun here. And uh, I have a, a, a little game called this or that. Okay. So I'll give you two things and you just choose between. Them, all right. Okay. So, um, all right. I hope you're, I'm, I'm sure you're old enough for this, but I hope I don't get you in trouble with your wife. Ginger, <laughs> Ginger or Marianne? Uh, Marianne. 
<laughs> Everybody goes from Mary Ann. <laughs> True. Uh, football or basketball? Uh, football. Christmas vacation or elf? Ooh, elf. Elf. Uh, uh, Animal House or Caddyshack? Um, they're both hilarious. I would say Animal House. Animal House. Um, craziest real estate story you've ever heard? I know I'm putting you on the spot. That I've ever heard. Um, I think it has to do with like... Um, I, I, it just came to my mind, but it was like a listing, um, a listing agent was telling the story and it might've been online. I think we might've asked for this in the Charlotte Real Estate Insiders maybe, but um, I want to say there was like a naked man or something in the house <laughs> asleep when the photographer was there to take pictures <laughs> so yeah I mean that was definitely a crazy story um they're always around like pictures or like showing up for a showing and somebody's I don't oh know, yeah I, those I, are always the ones that I hear <laughs> I've had similar um you know people come to the door we're yeah. there for the home inspection and I'm just like Hey, <laughs> don't you want to put a little something more on? You know, yeah. I don't, I really, uh, and thank goodness it was like I, I, I actually had somebody answer the door one time, and uh, I guess they'd just taken a shower and you know, they were, hey, and, hey Joy, what are you doing? How are you? I'm good. What are you guys doing? Are y'all having a party without me? What's going on? Yeah, she's um checking out a uh we're gonna do the mastermind on the 12th potentially here so she's gonna she's just checking out the space to see if it makes oh, sense. oh cool cool yeah. well we're almost done but speaking of mastermind uh that was my next question so we do some masterminds and joy is there show joy again joy say hello hi <laughs> so joy theo and i and sometimes others we do a couple of masterminds um you and they've been i think pretty successful in uh free food for all the realtors so be on the lookout for that but do you want to give them a little kind of a cliff notes of, of what not all we do with that and i think it's a pretty positive thing yeah so um it's kind of like round table discussions so we come we feed you first of all um <laughs> you can get drinks on your own and um then we facilitate um a topic so we've done listings or buyers or appraisals um, time management um, and so you typically know the topic ahead of time and around your table, you kind of um, talk about the different things that's working in that, um, uh, around that topic or area. And um, it's been great. I mean, there's just so much knowledge in the room or within the real estate community that just being able to hear the latest and greatest app or the latest and greatest system and what everybody's doing for that specific topic has, has been really fun to watch and be a part of as well. 100%. And we put that out in, uh, what's the name of our group? Uh, Insiders, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Real Estate yeah. Insiders, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not in that group, ask to be a member, we'll approve you. Uh, if you're, you know, as long as you're not like um, from Russia and you're like <laughs> <laughs> hacker A23, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if you're a legit real estate agent, we will let you in that group. And uh, Joy's also a part of that. So Joy, since you're on here, Get, get in a little plug if anybody's listening to this. Joy, tell us who you are and what you do. Hey, I'm Joy. I'm with First American Home Warranty. And um, we have home warranties for your buyers, your sellers, new construction. Just here to help you guys in any way I can. Awesome. And and she's part of the 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 the, the tripod of us putting that on. Do we have another date? Um, uh, I know we're working on one. Do we have a date for an, uh, the next one? Yeah, September 12th from um, 2 to 4. September 12th. Could Where's it going to be? At, um, How about the, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. Because <laughs> we'll you know. if it's lunch, it won't be from 2 to 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get back to September you. 12th September from 2 12th. to 4. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I won't hold you up any longer. But uh, so for all those folks out there who are listening uh, to Theo, and Theo can help you out with automating, um, make it making you more personable, but automating that, which is a great thing with closing gifts and follow-up and those 33 touches. You don't want to be one of those real estate agents who, you know, five years from now, you see them out somewhere and they bought a new house and they didn't go with you. And, and the reason is you didn't follow up. So I think uh, Theo can help you with that. How would they get in touch with you, Theo? 
Yeah, so um, our website, carolinaclosinggifts.us, um, or they can reach out to me personally. Um, my number is 410-807-6900. Awesome. And also, if they're interested, again, in your um, your charity, your 5K, which is coming up, what's that one more time? Um, that is outoftheashes5k.com. Or you awesome, can awesome. On Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. And since she's on here, Joy, what if somebody's interested in uh, uh, home warranty with you, how can they get in touch with you? They can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. They can follow me on TikTok or they can go old school and email me or call me. Um, but no matter what, I will answer the phone or I'll get back, right back to you. So awesome. What's your handle on uh, on TikTok? Um, Charlotte Warranty Girl, but it's CLT Warranty Girl. CLT warranty girl. Follow that. Jeez. I'm I'm I watch that to try to get some ideas. <laughs> Theo, have you started doing the have you started doing the TikToks yet? I um I'm starting the reels. I, there's one that's coming out that I have a scarf on my head. So <laughs> this is weird. Like the awesome. old people in the room are on TikTok. I know. The, the <laughs> well, you can are... you can use your TikToks and put them right. on reels. Put them on reels. Yeah. There's um, and I'll throw this out there for the listeners too. If you do a TikTok, you know, for everybody who doesn't know, it's just a vertical video instead. You know, like a YouTube is a looks like a rectangle, right? The video, I don't know what is it, sixteen by nine. The TikTok and Reels are just inverted. It's sixteen by nine or whatever, uh, a minute or less. You can make them real easy on TikTok. But there's an app called. There was one called SnapTik, but that one's not. It's SnapTok now. I think SnapTok. And you can download it without the watermark. So then you can use that to put on your reels as well. So, you know, do the work once and then use it in multiple places. Yeah, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. All about uh, trying to make it easy. But yeah, anyway, exactly. all right. Well, thanks, Theo. Thanks, Joy. Good to see you. Good to see you, Preston. All right. You've been listening to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. Join us on the next episode where we'll be talking to a successful agent or vendor about the right things to do and the wrong things you should avoid. Join us on the next episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast.